Good morning, David. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Good morning. So I, I just got off the phone with a potential client, and I was hoping to get um, some advice from both on how to proceed. Of course. Go ahead. Tell us about the file. So our client is one of two siblings. Uh, it's him and his sister, and their father passed away just recently. And our client is named as the executor uh, under the will. Uh, but he had little communication with his father prior to his father passing away. Uh, the, his father had been living with our client's sister, who, had, who was supposed to be taking care of him. Uh, a couple weeks ago, our client received a call, and it was from his father saying that the father had fallen down and that he wasn't feeling well. And he also indicated that the daughter who was supposed to be caring for him hadn't been in the house in the last two months. So the son called, the, called 911 and, and the father went to the hospital. Oh, well, that's, that's terrible. Uh, what did the client know about what, uh, what treatment his father was getting at the time? So he, he claims that he knew very little um, because the daughter had sequestered the father and really isolated him. And our client wasn't allowed to see him. But as soon as he found out, um, he called 911. And it turns out that the father hadn't been getting his meds for a significant period of time. Um, and that he was severely dehydrated and had developed infections, uh, including a UTI. Um, and then the father eventually passed away about two weeks later from sepsis. All right. Well, that's, that's pretty bad. Uh, what does the client want to achieve? Does he want us to pursue a wrongful death suit against the sister? I, I don't think so. I think he's more concerned that his sister is going to try and take more than her fair share of the estate. So he's looking to protect the, the will and uh, his father's wishes and ensure that his sister gets 50% and nothing more. Okay. So um, the only way that the sister is going to be able to increase her share of the estate is to sue the estate. And, and that's most probably going to be for dependent support, which is what I guess um, the sister may very well do. So what do you think about defending against that argument by uh, arguing that the daughter's conduct and leaving the father and neglecting the father was so unconscionable that it should disentitle her from any additional claim uh, that she would otherwise be entitled to? So I think that's, that's an interesting strategy. Now, the daughter is going to argue that the legislation only mentions unconscionable behavior disentitling someone to support in the case of a spouse. And since we're dealing with an adult child and not a spouse, she'll say that the legislation doesn't apply. So I think the son is going to have to address this on two fronts. First, to analyze if the adult child is really a dependent, and even if she is a dependent, the fact that she already is getting half the estate would go against her argument that she was not adequately provided for. And second, as you know, there are a whole bunch of factors that the court takes into account in determining how much a dependent should receive from the estate. And one factor is the relationship between the daughter and her father. And I presume that we're going to be able to argue that the terrible care that she gave her father should go against any claim that she has for getting additional support. So do you think that we could argue that the Slayer rule, which says that a person can benefit uh, from their wrongdoing, uh, for example, if someone killed the deceased, they can't inherit that under their estate. Do you think we can argue that that would apply here uh, because of her neglect? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting thought. Um, the Slayer Rule um, is part of the principle that a wrongdoer ought not to be able to profit um, from their wrong, but it's really restrictive. And so it would say that if the daughter was convicted of murder, that she would lose her inheritance under the will. But the same type of reasoning, and to echo what Greg was saying, may help us under the Succession Law Reform Act, under the statute governing dependent support, and the quality of that relationship um, may affect whether the claim is successful at all or may affect the, the quantum of support that's ordered. Um, and a case on point is uh, Webb and Bellway. 
So that's, that's true, but arguably with Webb and Bellway, the court accepted in principle that if the applicant's actions were egregious or malicious, so as to be unconscionable and to be a gross repudiation of the relationship, then she can be disentitled to support. The question here is whether the sister meets that test. But I think it's a novel approach and it might be uh, one of the best options that the client can rely on to reduce his sister's claims. Yeah, uh, no, I, I agree. I think that uh, the very least, the, um, the conduct, the egregious conduct of the sister will uh, be taken into account by the court as to quantum and, and perhaps a, a lot more. So I think that, would, that David, you, you have a lot to work with here. So I know that this has only been a three minute discussion and I'm gonna to have to do some more research uh, before drafting the materials, but it's been really helpful and it's definitely given us a direction to pursue. Uh, so thanks again and I really appreciate your input. No problem. You're welcome and uh, good luck going forward. Good luck. Thanks.